So uh, we've been having a few problems with the front area. The energy management lights come on quite frequently, but it goes off after a day or two. So obviously an intermittent fault. Done the plugs, new set of plugs, new set of plug leads. Uh, the error code reader came up with cam sensor. So having removed the possibility that plugs or plug leads may be a problem, creating a bit of a misfire or something like that, it's time to uh, change the cam sensor. And un unlike some cars where the cam sensor is on the outside, on these 2.2 16 valve engines uh, it's behind the cam belt, which is annoying to say the least. So let's have a look. There's a cover here that covers the spark plug so we've got to remove the cover because the wiring for the cam sensor comes down through the front of that cover. To remove that cover sometimes it's easier to remove this air inlet tube sometimes not you can get away with it. There was a big plastic lump here, sort of uh, just posy and rubbish. So I've removed that because it was all the little clips that would break and all sorts of things. So this original wiring loom now is just clipped to there. So we're going to remove various things. Of course we've got to remove that but we've got to remove the ancillaries belt. And I'm going to show you this because if you take this belt off, and don't take really full notice of the way it's set up. You can try and put it back on and it's too long. So if you look at the if you look at the alternator, it goes round like that in a tight tight shaped bend, which means that you've got a lot of contact. There's the um, tensioner. So it goes round the tensioner, down round the crank pulley and then off round the power steering pump so hopefully that makes a bit of sense so we'll just undo this cable tie and there's the wiring gone now there's a bolt just down here but first of all we need to remove the ancillaries belt I think it is 14 mil. Wrong. Must be 15. And a wrench. Then you just have to slacken off the tensioner and hook the belt off. There we go. And if you look in the book, that book beginning with H, um, it doesn't show you. A lot of noise in the background so we're just gonna have to put up with that and you can hear the clicking of the charge controller occasionally even though it's not very windy in fact there's only a light breeze as the uh, the charge controller comes on from the solar then of course the wind contactor comes in, it just dropped out and then dropped back in again. There's the, the battery volts were just going down and then the timer on the charge controller goes, that's enough, and the volts go straight back up again and it switches back on again. So the let's have a look here. There's the crank pulley and I've got it marked, you probably can't see. Yeah, I've marked it with white to line it up just to make sure it goes back the same. And it's torque headed bolts. So we'll just remove that, because you've got to remove that to get this cam pulley cover off. 
What's that? That's an E10. Is that the right one? Yeah, that's the right one. These shouldn't be too tight. And then there's a, a bolt there and there's a bolt further down that just hold the rest of the plastic cover on. I'm just thinking myself lucky this is an inline engine. If this was a transverse engine in one of the other cars, it would be an absolute nightmare. Because there'd be uh, engine mountings and the, wi the uh, wheel arch would be right here. And so thank goodness for inline engines. Although, I noticed that all the modern cars have got timing chains like they used to do in the past and cam belts are relatively a thing of the past so again car manufacturers realize they can't get away with it anymore is that it should be it there we go that's the cover Right, you see that silver bit there, that's the bottom of the cam sensor and there's a torque screw just where the cam pulleys virtually meet. You undo that and the uh, cam sensor comes out. But first we've got to remove this cover there we go just undoing those two screws let's have a look there's the spark plugs come on camera there focus in front of the spark plugs there's this little recess and in there is the plug for the cam sensor right I've removed that little screw from in there and it's a uh, this one's a torque head and it's an E8 so that's that now it's not very easy to see how this cable is attached so it's best to if you can fiddle the whole lot out. There it is, there's a the cam sensor and we'll just turn it over and there's this wire clip and the clip is the side of this encapsulated bit. So, and there it goes. Typical. Luckily it just went down there. And this old cam sensor the numbers are one, two and three in that order, which is very useful. There is a video that I was watching and it tells you what these are, these numbers are. I shall, um, I shall dig that out a bit later, the information. But uh, these are five volt apparently, so you've got five volt positive and the negative and the other one which I think is the two but I might be wrong is the signal wire and that's about one and a half volts variable anyway apparently I was wrong according to that video that I watched and I'm going to put the link to the video in the um, description on this video uh, number one here is five volts positive and you could measure that with a multimeter. Uh, number two is negative and number three 
is the switching voltage which varies between 0.5 volt and 1.5 volts hopefully we've cleared that up okay with a little bit of grief I've got this one back in place the new one there it is you see there now there was a bit of a hassle I think we can just about see it from here let's see if we can focus come on camera focus no there that'll do this bit here sits against this shoulder so that's a bit of steel there and there's a shoulder and so therefore that bolt wasn't going in the fork was round this bolt but that wasn't lining up just slightly and the bolt wasn't going in so I had to take the merest wipe off this piece just against that shoulder just to get it fit get the bolt to be able to go in so hopefully the, the sensor is still in the right place I assume that like half a dozen wipes of the file won't make any difference but just making you aware that it does sit against that steel shoulder there now we've got the socket and you don't actually flip that thing off you just press that in so that will be in that way round down in that hole and you can just press that wire and hook it out whilst we're here let's just have a look at the uh, the cam belt tensioner there it is so what you do is to tension it or to take the tension out to remove the belt is you undo that knot and then you put an allen key in there and turn it and you would turn it so this comes up to uh, slacken it off now with a new belt that pointer there is supposed to be in line with that notch there but I've retensioned this belt this belt's done about 18,000 miles let's just zoom out a bit and I've retensioned it so it's further over but look there's still a reasonable amount of slack in that so it's not over tight but retensioning that has made a huge difference to the way the engine runs it runs a lot smoother now don't know what's going on maybe you've got some wear in the tensioner or these um, these jockey pulleys something like that so next time I change the belt I'll change these two pulleys and the uh, the adjuster and so now it's time just to put everything back together here we are on handheld camera you can see the the belt there all back together Let's start her up. Just put my hand over there. There's all the lights on. And the only light that's on there is the handbrake light. Whoopee! <laughs> 